Jesus said to them, my food is to do the will of him who sent me and to accomplish his work. Do you notice what Jesus is doing? I have food to eat. I must accomplish the will of the Father. This is important because the beginning of the chapter talks about thirst. And here we see midway through the chapter, Jesus is talking about hunger. This is really important because the Israelites, because of their thirst and because of their hunger, they lost faith. And you know what? We thirst and we hunger for many things in this world. Will those things pull us away from our Lord? Will all the temporary needs that we have in this world pull us away from the Lord? Or will we hunger and thirst to know and love God? That's what we must do. We must get to the point where we say, I hunger and thirst to love Him, to serve Him, to do His will. And that's when our life changes. I have food to eat that you do not know. And look at what verse 34 says. Jesus explains it. He says, he said to them, my food is to do the will of him who sent me and to accomplish his work. And this is our food as well, to do the will of God. This is what we hunger and thirst for, my brothers and sisters. You can understand that all of this is written in light of what happened to the Israelites in the desert when they're in the book of Exodus. Our Lord is showing us we are going to have temptations, we're going to have trials, we're going to have difficulties beyond what we can even imagine. And through all those temptations and trials and difficulties, can we turn to God and say, my food is to do your will, Lord. And that will give you the greatest peace. It will give you, it will give you the greatest hope when you're in the most difficult moment in your life. My food is to do your will. That's what I'm going to concentrate on. Well, let's go on now to verse 36. He who reaps receives wages and gathers fruit. You know what a reaper is? A reaper is the one who goes out and picks all the crops, picks all the wheat. He who reaps receives wages and gathers fruit for eternal life, so that the sower and the reaper may rejoice together. For here the saying holds true, one sows and another reaps. I sent you to reap that for which you did not labor. Others have labored, and you have entered into their labor. What's going on here? Well, here's Jesus talking to his disciples. They're going to go out, and they're going to share the gospel with the whole world. And Jesus is basically saying, you know, that he came into this world for his people, uh, who are descendants of Abraham, Jews. But now they're reaping and sowing from Samaritans. And they're going to reap and sow from Gentiles. In other words... Not only Jews, not only descendants of Abraham, but other nations, other peoples are going to come into the new and eternal covenant that he's establishing. And he's using this language of reaping and sowing to help us to understand this. So verse 39, it says that many Samaritans from that city believed in him because of whose testimony? Because of the woman's testimony. He told me all that I ever did. And so when the Samaritans came to him, they asked him to stay with them. And he stayed there for two days. And many more believed because of his word. Do you notice? It's because of his word. And they said to the woman, it is no longer because of your words that we believe. For we have heard for ourselves. And we know that this is indeed who? The Savior of the world. This is a very important uh, section of verses. This woman, who is this sinner who had five husbands, because of her testimony, the Samaritans were believing in Jesus. It shows you how Jesus can work in the lives of sinners, how he can change their lives. Do you see that? This woman who had, she had really must have had a difficult life. Five husbands, she's out in the middle of the day at the well, and it's because of her testimony that the Samaritans are starting to believe. And then when they encounter Jesus, it's his word. It's his word that changes them. Does the word of God transform your life? When you come to mass, do you really listen to the scripture readings? Do you show up late, run into the church uh, while the readings are going on? You know, as a priest, you know, there's a moment where we pick up the book of gospel, the book of the gospels. Have you seen that? It's on the altar. We pick it up and then we turn around and look at the people and it's like the multiplication of loaves. Like mass starts and the church is half full sometimes. 
And then it's slowly filling up as the readings are going on. And then by the time I pick up that book of Gospels and I turn around, where did all these people come from? But guess what? You missed the first reading, the responsorial song, and the second reading. And if you look at what, what John is underlining, the Word of God transforms us. When the scriptures are proclaimed at Mass, there should be a true encounter with the very person of Jesus Christ. And then another encounter with Jesus in the Holy Eucharist. This is so important for us to come to church, meditate on the readings, listen attentively, pray over them, and have a real encounter with Jesus, who is the Word become flesh every time we come to Mass. The Samaritans were transformed by Christ and the Word that He spoke to them. And so my brothers and sisters, they recognize that he was the savior of the world. It's the first time we encounter people saying, this is the savior of the world in John's gospel. And it's Samaritans who are recognizing him as the savior of the world publicly. Verse 43, it says that after the two days, he departed to Galilee for Jesus himself testified that a prophet has no honor in his own country. So when he came to Galilee, the Galileans welcomed him, having seen all that he had done in Jerusalem at the feast, for they too had gone to the feast. So he came again to Cana in Galilee, where he had made the water wine. And at Capernaum, there was an official whose son was ill. And when he heard that Jesus had come from, Gal from Judea to Galilee, he went and begged him to come down and heal his son for he was at the point of death. And you notice Jesus is gonna work another miracle, but they're not called miracles, they're called signs. And how many signs are there in John's Gospel? Seven, very good. And therefore he said to him, unless you see signs and wonders, you will not believe. Do you wanna see miracles? Tell me the truth. Would you love to see a miracle? Of course, I would love to see a miracle. But do miracles break true faith? Well, you have to have something else. Miracles help, they're very helpful. But you, if you don't have conversion, all the miracles in the world won't change your life. And a lot of times people say, oh, if I only saw a miracle, I'd believe in God. If I only saw a miracle, I would change. And I always tell them, no, you wouldn't. The Israelites saw plenty of miracles in the Old Testament when they came out of Egypt. If there's no conversion, if there's no true change of heart, there will be no change. And so this is what our Lord is getting at. If you, if you look here in, at verse 48, he says, unless you, see, unless you see signs and wonders, you will not believe. The official said to him, sir, come down before my child dies. And Jesus said to him, go, your son will live. The man believed the word that Jesus spoke to him and went his way. Notice, Jesus doesn't even have to go. He just says the word, go, and your son will live. Do you remember a prophet who worked a similar miracle? Do you remember the successor of the prophet Elijah? His name was Elisha, okay? It's pronounced a few different names, Elisha or Elisha. And, and so there was this commander of the Assyrian army. It's in 2 Kings chapter 5. And his name was Naaman. And he had leprosy and he, and he wanted Elijah to come out and wave his hand over him and you know, do a really you know, hand-waving thing and heal him. And Elijah just said, just go wash it in the Jordan seven times and you'll be okay. And he got all mad. What is it, the Jordan, the dirty river? I would have to go down there. And you know, every excuse you can imagine, just like we do sometimes when we get upset, we make up every excuse possible. That's a dirty little tiny river. Why don't you send me to a nice, beautiful, clean river? And it, you know, it, it, and the commander's servant just said, Look, if the prophet said it, just go do it. And he went, he washed seven times, and he was healed. Okay. And here's Jesus saying something similar. He's doing something similar but greater. He just says, Go and he will be fine. He sends him away, and the man believes. Do you really believe in the word of Christ? Do you have sincere faith in the Lord? Do you trust him? 
Go, your son will live. The man believed the word that Jesus spoke to him. He went his way. In verse 59, as he was going down, his servant met him and told him that his son was living. And so he asked them the hour when he began to mend. And they said to him, yesterday, at the seventh hour, the fever left him. And the father knew that it was the hour when Jesus had said to him, your son will live. And he himself believed in all his household. And this was now the second sign that Jesus did when he had come from Judea to Galilee. It's the second sign. Now, we're gonna start chapter five right now. I'm gonna see how far I can go. What time is it right now? Can I get a time? 10.30 right now? Well, you know, maybe I better finish on chapter four. We'll, we'll pick up on chapter five. Any chapters that I don't cover, we do have on videos already. My brothers and sisters, please rise at this moment. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Dear Heavenly Father, we give you thanks and praise for this opportunity. Help each of us to reflect on this conversation about living water. May the presence and the activity of the Holy Spirit be truly present in our, our lives. May we pray every day, asking the Spirit to renew us and fill us with the gift of living water and living in the Spirit. May we share the faith with others, helping others to return to the Lord. Bless your people and protect them. I ask this in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Thank you so much. Have a blessed day. Thank you. God bless you guys.